I watched how Biggie had removed um, Dami, Chinwe, and Ruti, the DRC agents from his mansion yesterday. And as much as I was applauding those phenomenal women, you know, for such a job well done, for understanding their assignment, for um, accomplishing their mission, I was equally disappointed I was equally disappointed, ladies and gentlemen. For me, that was a very distasteful and demeaning way to remove those girls from the house. Take it or leave it. In fact, feel free to agree or disagree with me. But I said what I said, and that is how I feel. I felt like that was very demeaning. It gave so much power to Onyeka to to Wani made it look like oh my god finally Big Brother realizes his mistakes oh my god finally Big Brother realizes that they are irrelevant and so he's removing the pest from the house removed them from the house like they were criminals you know how Big Brother disqualifies housemates you know they don't even give them time to pack up. They don't even give them time to dress up and look good. They just kick them out of the house like they are the rejects of the season. The bottom pot. No, not bottom pot because bottom pot's food is always very sweet here. Yeah, but more like the rejects of the, of the house, of the society in that house. They removed them that way. And in my frank opinion, that is a problem. It means that <laughs> there's a problem in the production team. It means that there's something lacking in the production team. It means that there's some level of understanding that production does not really have about the concept of reality TV itself. And I'll explain. But my point is, that was a very, very demeaning way to remove those girls from the house. After all they did to revive this dying season, to revive an almost dead show, that is what they get. They don't even get at least two minutes during the live eviction show to receive their accolades, to receive their flowers, to get a booker to interact with them, applaud them, and also at least ask a, a question or two about how far that whole drama went Saturday night, just for them to clear the air about why they did certain things they did. At least just to give clarity to the situation. Just to clear the air. At least just two minutes for the three of them all at once on that stage with Ebuka. Why was it such a big deal? Why did that not happen? Huh? Why didn't that happen? And the most annoying part is uh, the organizers of the show, production, they understand that in this here society, <laughs> that type of content is not understood by many. It's only a few that actually do understand the kind of content. It's only a few people actually that really understood what was going on. The return of, you know, those three females to the house, the blast from the past. It was only a few people that understood what was going on. And guys, let me remind you all that one thing about this Big Brother show is during the week a lot of people do not really have time to catch up with the show but you see that live eviction show on sundays a lot of people actually do catch up with the show a lot of people do watch the show why because they are very much interested in who leaves the house for the week so a lot of people watch now it's even more damning when there was drama during the Saturday night party and they're flowing into Sunday. People just want to catch up, wants to know what happened. And so they go onto social media and then they catch up without having all the information, without having all the details of the events as it unfolded in the house. What they tend to hold onto their chest and thereby make their conclusions from or even build their narratives from are those little, little clips that you see on social media. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, why does production keep fucking up chances? It's not like there's no time. It's not like there's no opportunity. There is opportunities, but instead of them to use it to do the right things, they use it to give promotion to their favorites in the house. 
Because that was exactly what happened yesterday during the live eviction share. Call it whatever it was. That time that Ibuka gave to OC on that stage to explain his own side as to how he almost got violent with Ruti and Dami and Chinwe, that time would have been given to those three girls on that stage, first off, to receive their flowers, their accolades, and also to give clarity to the situation. Because after all, <laughs> the season has almost ended. So what are they hiding again? What other twists are they hiding to, to reveal again? Huh? That time they gave to Onyeka and Wani to display their delusion, to display their, I don't know what, what, whatever that was. Especially for Wani that acted like a very, very funny coward, you know, in those three days. <laughs> Making so much noise and made a lot more noise even after the show. That time Ebuka gave to them to make all of that noise. At least that time would have been cut short and then given to Dami, Chiwi, and Ruti to at least shine in their moment, to enjoy their moment. Because why? They were the saviors of the season, whether you like it or yes. They were the saviors of the season. This season would have died. It would have died a very terrible death if those three girls had not gone into that house to give the show that they gave, to give the content, the highlights, that level of entertainment that they gave, the show would have died terribly like that. And we would have labeled it 100% the worst season ever in the history of Big Brother Niger. So disappointing. So disappointing, ladies and gentlemen. I feel so bad for those girls. So bad. I don't know if Ebuka is going to have another media round interview session with them. I don't know if they're going to have another media round because, of course, um, by virtue of them getting evicted in their various weeks, they have had their media rounds. So I don't know if they're going to have another media round. I doubt. I really doubt. I really doubt if they're going to have because, of course, we have three fresh evicted housemates. So those ones will have to observe their media rounds this week. And so, the question is, will there be an opportunity for these three girls to tell their own side of the story? It's about the organizers of the show, the production team, yeah, let's say the, the production team that obviously sent them into that house, obviously for a mission. It's about them giving them that opportunity still on the show to clear the air. So the question is, who is going to clear the air for them? It's the fact that production is expecting the viewers to just understand. Here's the thing, not all the viewers understand. Not all of them understand. It's only very few of them that actually understand. It's only very few of them that understands the concept of a proper reality TV. It's the reactions that comes with it. The rest are so emotional. The rest are so blinded by their standship for their faith, they will do whatever it takes to bring down those girls. And that is exactly what has been happening since Thursday last week that Big Brother returned those girls into the house. They said all manner of vile things against those girls. They said all manner of things. They've called them out, they've dragged them. And then that whole drama that happened Saturday night after the party, oh my God, it's been a lot. To the point that, don't by the way, twins, um, sister even put out a message threatening them. I think it was on Instagram stories or somewhere threatening them that she can actually burn wigs even though her brother um, does not put hands on women. You know what's even worse? The fact that a lot of people did not even watch what actually transpired between those girls and the rest of the house that Saturday night after the party. A lot of people did not see that. And so when OC was explaining himself on the stage during the live eviction show, when he was telling his own side of the story, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, as much as I actually like OC, I mean, I love that man. He's such an amazing person. I love him. I love his spirit. He's a very gentle soul, very, very amazing personality. But he did not tell the complete truth on that stage. Of course, he has to protect himself. I don't blame him. The person I blame was Ebuka. You could tell that Ebuka just needed the guy to clear the air because it was very obvious that he was going to get physical with the women. So it was more like trying to clean the reputation of um, OC of the Mbadiwe family. 
Eh? What kind of nonsense is that? What nonsense is that? What would it have taken? What would it have taken for... Okay, you know what, guys? Before I even continue, first of all, let me reintroduce myself. I have been talking for this long and I'm here to introduce myself. Hi. You're especially welcome to my channel. My name is Gloria Elijah. This is Frankly Speaking with Gloria Elijah and I am the girl with the tea. If you're new here, you're especially welcome. Thanks so much for choosing to tune into my channel and to watch my video. Um, but if you're yet to subscribe, please do not hesitate to do just that. And also whilst at it, make sure you turn on your post notification bell to always receive a lot of my videos whenever I upload a new one. For those of you that are returning viewers, returning subscribers, thank you so much for tuning in again. And guys, please do not forget to give this video a thumbs up, all right? And also a quick reminder that on Wednesday by um, 6 p.m. WAT, we're going to be converging here for our YouTube live conversation. There's also going to be the one for Saturday, all right, but the one for Wednesday is a must, and I look forward to seeing all of you. So please make sure you come through, all right? Now, <laughs> let's just quickly proceed with the rest of the video. Now, think of it this way, and there's a possibility that all I'm saying right now are facts, all right? And this is based on my deduction from what was shown to us on the show, right? Now, first off, I do not want to believe that Dami, Chinwe, and Ruti decided by themselves to just walk into production's office and tell them, okay, we're going into the house. We want to go and wreak havoc. We want to go and take revenge. We want to go and do whatever we want to do. And they said, oh, okay, here are the ninja's uniforms. Wear it. Go inside the house and do whatever you like. And then when you're done, we're going to remove your people. That sounds silly, right? Sounds very silly and flimsy. So I do not want to think that that was actually the case. I want to believe that this was actually a consensual arrangement. Yes, I want to believe that the organizers of the show saw truly that the show was dying, that the show was boring. Viewers have been complaining. People have been saying a lot of things about the show and more especially viewership, probably the traffic of the show has kind of dropped drastically and they needed redemption. And so they probably thought about it. That, okay, we've tried everything in the book. We've tried all the tricks up our sleeves. We've sent Toke into the house. We've sent Ebuka to remind them occasionally during the live fiction show. We've done different um, pranks from the ninjas, but they're not budging. They just want to sleep, eat, and kiss, and smash, and do whatever the F they want to do in the house. They just want to sing Kumbaya. They don't want to give entertainment. They don't want to give us the show. They don't want to increase the highlights in the house. So what better way to trigger these people than to send in their worst nemesis or their worst enemies in the same house and so they decided to send in dami ruti and chinwe if they did not want to revive the show why did they not send in on any other housemate why didn't they send in someone like chizoba to go and continue licking ozi's um, osi's forehead why didn't they send in chizoba to go and continue hugging osi somebody that has a fiance why didn't they send in, um, who else, who else are we going to talk about? Why didn't they send in Sean to go and continue disrespecting Wani? Why didn't they send in the Ndi pair? They should go and continue their bickering, their uh, relationship and uh, relatives and uh, bickering. Why didn't they send in any other evicted housemates? Why did it have to be these particular housemates? Well, the answer is quite obvious because they recognize that these are the only three people that are reality TV worthy material that will be bold enough and audacious enough to take the bull by the horns, to do what they need to do, to do what is required, to trigger those housemates to the point of creating highlights and thereby increasing the traffic of the show before the end of the season. And they succeeded in doing the, just that. Whoever came up with that idea to send in those three girls, that person saw the end from their own standpoint. They saw the end result and they executed it. And I'm sure that they've been smiling to the bank. I'm sure that all the money that they lost in the past five weeks or four weeks, I'm sure that in those three days, they recouped it. So what are we talking about? As far as I'm concerned, these girls did the show a favor. Because what they did, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it could go either ways. 
People could either like them more and celebrate them more or hate them. And listen, it, that has been the case. It, it's, I don't even know if it's 50-50. Only them can tell. But that has been the case. A lot of people love them for what they've done. A lot of people hate them for what they've done. And of course, the bulk of the people that hate them for what they've done are the fanatics that obviously still have their faith in the house that desperately wants their faith to win. So it's been a 50-50 reaction. I don't want to believe that production does not know that this was going to be, you know, the reaction from the viewers. I'm sure that they knew that people were either going to love the girls or hate the girls. I'm sure they knew. So the question is, why didn't they protect these girls? Because the way they removed them from the house and the fact that there was no opportunity for Ebuka to have a brief conversation with the three of them on that stage during the live eviction show, for me, that was them throwing those girls out to the cold and not protecting them. Not, not even... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's not fair. Now, I don't know the terms of their agreement. I don't know. I'm not going to say I know. I don't know. They probably told the girls that, oh, go into the house, do whatever, but make sure you trigger those people. Make sure you get a reaction. And whatever happens at the end of the day, it's all on you. I don't know if that is what they agreed on. But ladies and gentlemen, nobody would tell me that production did not encourage those girls to go all out, to do whatever it takes to get that result. Because of their persistence, we saw how persistent they were. The moment they walked in through those doors, they knew what they had to do to shake up the house. And that was exactly what they did until they were removed from the house yesterday afternoon. I am very sure that they were told to trigger, poke, provoke, trigger, poke, provoke ensure you get the reaction keep talking these housemates they're not going to budge they're not going to want to bat an eyelid they're going to want to act like the bigger person but make sure you keep on poking and poking and poking and provoking until you get a reaction and ladies and gentlemen if you had watched exactly what happened right after the party from the party till sunday morning you will agree with me that this was exactly what happened so nobody would tell me that those girls were not told what to do or even given the free hand or the, 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 the um, what's it called now, the permission to do what they did. I am very, very sure that they were told to go into that house and shake up that house in whatever way they can. And that was exactly what they did. So my bone of contention now with production is why didn't they give those girls a grand exit? Why didn't they give them the stage to receive their accolades, to receive their flowers, to be celebrated? Why? They removed them from the house like common criminals sent into ninjas to come and stand at the, at the eviction door. I don't understand. Are they coming to take them to jail or what? Because that was what it looked like. And the girls were not even properly dressed. And so it made me wonder that, okay, fine. Saturday, before the party, Shinwei had been summoned into the diary room. I don't know whatever conversation she had with Big Brother. Of course, we don't really see conversations that happens in the, in the diary room. If it is not the diary sessions, we don't get to see it, right? But whatever reason Biggie had actually summoned Shinwei into the diary room, ladies and gentlemen, my instincts tells me that it is to give her an assignment for the night. So if they were able to summon one of them to the diary room, what stopped Big Brother from summoning one of them to the diary room earlier yesterday morning to probably tell them that, okay, well, we're going to be removing people from the house. So here's what you have to do. You have to dress up. You have to look good and you have to prepare for your exit because it could happen at any time. If they wanted to give us that surprise thingy, right? So they could have told them that. So that after their salon, you know, appointment, they could have showered, dressed up, done their makeup, looked good. And if they wanted to take a nap, they take a nap because, ladies and gentlemen, all of that work that they did, that was a lot of work. They would need to sleep. They would need to rest their vocal cords because they've really stretched themselves in three days to revive and resuscitate the dead show. But no, that was not the case. Instead, impromptu, just out of the blues, they sent in the ninjas. Uh, it is time to, to, to bid farewell to your blast from the past. Allowing Wani, our barking chihuahua, 
to feel victorious, to feel like, oh my God, yes, I overcame. Yes, I overcame what exactly? Like, girl, you presented yourself like a coward. I mean, allowing Onyeka and Wani to have the last laugh, making it look like, oh yes, Big Brother saw that we're struggling and Big Brother knows what to do. Like, what rubbish? What rubbish? What rubbish? What rubbish? If those girls had been given their moment on that stage, if those girls had been given an opportunity to at least clear the air very briefly on that stage, if Ebuka at least done his own part, you know, by bringing those girls on the stage and celebrating them for a job well done, I'm sure that the audience would not have deemed it fit to be celebrating and clapping for Wani when she was doing all that, those are nonsense dramatics. Oh, big brother, pa 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 oh, me, I miss her in the house, I miss her in the house, I miss her in the house. Like, really? Thereby villainizing those girls whilst making Unyeka and Wani to feel like the hero of the week. How pathetic. How pathetic. As I mentioned before, it just goes to show that even the production team have fallen sadly into the category of those viewers that do not really understand proper reality TV show. They are the ones giving us the show, but they just proved to us that even them do not even understand how to give a proper show. Just when I thought that they did great, just when I was giving them their flowers, look at, look at how the whole thing just dipped just went from 1,000 to zero. And then let's quickly talk about Ebuka. I know I talked about Ebuka on my previous eviction video, yeah? But I need to say this, that for whatever reason that Ebuka chose to antagonize Cassia this season, I just want production to know that we are watching. Because whilst they've been antagonizing and villainizing Cassia, they've been promoting Onyeka a lot. I watched Onyeka's diary session yesterday, which once again was the longest diary session of yesterday. I watched the diary session and I, I saw the way Big Brother was applauding this girl, was giving her accolades and even named her his shining star of the season. I watched all of that. And ladies and gentlemen, it's sad that that was not the first time that Big Brother will be boosting this girl's ego. That was not the first time. It's like at every given opportunity when this girl has a diary session, that is what Big Brother does. You know, pumping her ego, telling her directly and indirectly that she's the reason for the season, that she's the star of the season. And as much as fine, it's okay for Big Brother to do that, to encourage housemates to boost their morale. I feel like when it comes to Onyeka, it's quite excessive. And it's like there's some sort of agreement with production, the entire production team, that, oh, you see this particular one, nobody should touch her, she's our fave, she's the protected one, so nobody should stress her, nobody should do whatever. Because during the live eviction show, tell me why Ebuka, after antagonizing Cassia on the stage, with those ridiculous questions about, oh, eh, it seems like you have a problem with Onyeka, and then drilling her and drilling her with those ridiculous follow-up questions, Tell me why, when he went back to interact with the housemates before he signed off for the night, tell me why he failed to question Onyeka as to why she was blaming the DRC agents, you know, chaos on Victoria and Cassia. How did they even come into that mix? How did they even come into that equation? How was it their fault? If you watch my almost one hour long video of, you know, where I detailed the whole event, I mentioned that. How Onyeka, in her usual, vengeful, vindictive, and vile manner, had all, all automatically started trying to rile up the rest of the house against Victoria and Cassia, which is something that she has been doing on irregular, on irregular. That last, guys, yesterday was not the first time. Telling them that you see, you see why I told you people that these two people, they are so vile, they are so wicked. How can they be like, how, how can they be, if, oh, if they were, if they did not associate themselves with those girls, tell me why those girls will have the audacity to do what they did. And Ebuka did not deem it fit to question Onyeka why she decided to, to put all the blame on Cassia and Victoria. 
Yes, Cassie has been evicted, but Victoria is still in that house. And ladies and gentlemen, the impression that production continuously creates about certain housemates is that they are the vile ones, is that they are the villains, is that they are the ones that are constantly attacking Oyeka whilst Oyeka is the saint. Why do they keep doing that? In case they do not know, it makes them look bad. In case they don't know, it, it just completely exposes their bias. In case they do not know, this thing they've been doing for weeks, it just goes to show that they've chosen their winner already. Yes, it goes to show that they are playing with the sentiment of the viewing audience. It goes to show that they are trying to put, in fact, not trying, that they have placed Onyeka on this ridiculously high pedestal for the viewers to worship. That, oh, she's the saint of the season. She can never go wrong. She's the only person that is the victim in that house. And so whatever happens, blame it on every other person that she's had issues with, but not her. They always, always fail to make this girl take accountability for her actions. And that was exactly what Ibuka once again did yesterday. Her talking about, oh, I knew I was the only one that would tell them the truth. And, da, 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 da. and then making, you know, throwing shades at Victoria that was there. And I'm glad that Victoria did not say anything. Let them all look stupid. Let them all look stupid. But I want them to know something. We're watching. We're watching. I know that, yes. Most of the viewers of the show are very gullible. They are very, very gullible. They do not have a mind of their own. They follow the herd's mentality. You know, they are like headless chickens. They go where the wind blows, yes. Their opinion is not really strong. In fact, they are not very opinionated. So whatever they tell them, that is what they believe. Whatever production wants them to believe and see, that's what they accept. But I also want them to know that there are those of us that are very smart. We're very intelligent. We see through the blurred lines. <laughs> we see these things. And we're going to continue calling it out until this ridiculous season ends. Because this season has just been crazy. I mean, just when I thought that production was redeeming themselves, look at what they did yesterday during the live eviction show. I'm going to stop talking here right now because, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I'll probably have a lot more to say um, on Wednesday evening during our live conversation. But in the meantime, I'm going to stop talking here right now, all right? Because I would love to hear from all of you about these matters. What are your thoughts? Do you think it was fair the way um, the DRC agents were removed from the house? Do you think it was fair the way Ebuka interrogated Cassia on the stage? Do you think it was fair the fact that Ebuka did not drill Onyeka about her vile? accusations against Cassia and Victoria. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I'll see you guys on another video soon. Thanks for watching and have an amazing day. Bye!